My name's Dan Shockley, and I was asked to do a presentation here at uh, the FIMS booth. And so uh, it was agreed that I would present on some perspectives of FIMS at Turner. So a brief history, and Turner has a rich uh, participation history in FIMS. Um, actually, Michael Cutter had served as uh, business board uh, chairman. Currently, Abby Weithenthal is serving as business board chairman. Uh, I had served as co-chair of FIMS and uh, also uh, am a technical team participant and at one point in time was an AMWA uh, TSC. So the perspectives that I'd like to present, uh, there's several of them. I like to present uh, based on file-based workflows. It all is about the files. That's when everything changed. And we'll take a business perspective. We'll also take a, a technical perspective from a broadcasting uh, viewpoint. And we'll talk about an implementation uh, perspective from a broadcaster's viewpoint. So file-based workflows at Turner. This is our Turner perspective. Uh, we started moving to file-based workflows back in 2009, uh, 2005, and we're still doing it. Um, news and entertainment, I coupled those. We actually started in news first. Now we're migrating more of the uh, file-based workflows to entertainment. Uh, that includes some of these basic workflows, content contribution, which would be a capture, uh, program edit, content, uh, I said content contribution and content distribution, and then always got to do archiving and fulfillment. Uh, one of the issues when you work with file-based workflows, and we've talked about this throughout the day, is there's multiple systems and there's multiple integration partners. This is one of the reasons that uh, FIMS was conceived. We want to try and have a common, uh, simplistic, if you were, way to actually integrate all these systems. Um, and so currently what you would do as a broadcaster, you would do some in-house development and you would probably also have some custom vendor development to do your integration. You're going to have one-off integrations probably for all the particular services that you might actually need to facilitate those workflows. Uh, and that is then an increasing importance on file format standards, which uh, AMWA is an industry leader, as you may know. And we're moving, the industry is moving towards IT-based processing. So broadcast and IT continues to merge. So a business perspective, and what is the business board at FIMS really concerned about from a Turner uh, standpoint. First, there is the, the FIMS implementations, collaboration. We're talking about cohesion across the vendors. We have lots of vendors at the table, and there's great cohesion, and that collaboration is actually key to having a good framework. Uh, additionally, there's more than one perspective because there are lots of participants. And so you're getting a world worth of knowledge in a framework that's going to be offered back to the entire industry. That's very important to Turner from a business perspective. Then the business board also looks at service selection, which is another thing that's very important. You want to make sure that the right services are being worked on to get this thing off the ground in a very uh, lean fashion. We want the most important services done first so that we can start adding value and be able to implement that into the environment. So those are repository, and this is one of the keys that Turner was waiting on, actually, was this repository service. This is where everything actually resolves. Uh, that we already have the capture service, we have a transform and transfer service, we're working on a Q, uh, QA service. So we're working on the right services, and it, this is the business perspective that Turner is very interested in. Let's look at the technical perspective from, again, from the eyes of Turner. Um, one of the things that we need to be able to do at Turner is provide standards and common interfaces. So we want that commonality. We want to be able to have the same communications, the same dialect with all the services that we put in, in flight. So we're going to need a common interface for all the media operations that we actually use that would do the CRUD functions, it would also include ingest, the ability to uh, transfer and transform 
throughout the, the ecosystem and all the services that would be required to actually make that happen. So that is one of the number one uh, reasons that we would want uh, and, and one of the technical perspectives that Turner is very interested in. Automated content and metadata manipulation, including components, component based formats. We're talking about services, we're talking about programs doing things to the media, not a person. It needs to be something that could be automated, developed, so it can hand, happen uh, automatically. Because hundreds of thousands of operations, hundreds of thousands of files are passing through uh, our, our shop every day. So we need to do this in a program and services way. We also then need to be able to query, and we want to be able to query through interfaces so that we can query all, of the, all the different repositories that we might have. And we want that query to be the same. So that's another reason that FIMS is very important. Uh, utilizing web services to do all this, obviously web service is the big hype today, and so we want to be able to do that from a web service and then have the back end do what it is that we actually told it to do. We are allowing for event-driven processing. We don't want to do polling. We don't want to keep asking, are you done? We want to be told when something happens. So event processing is very, very key. You can actually build an entire workflow off of vents firing based on what's happening on that repository and or any of the other services. Uh, and then the common uh, media concentric metadata model. This is really key. This is one of the keys to FIMS. The fact that all of these industry leaders have gotten together in, in single uh, meetings, in single rooms, and designed what this metadata uh, model will actually look like, something that makes sense from a media concentric standpoint, so that all of the interfaces are talking the same dialect, not just the same API calls. So, technology enablement. Here's where you start, and we started over here, where we had single functions that we had point-to-point -point integrations with, and of, of course, with SOA, it's a technology enabling uh, the architecture, you can now use interfaces to services that has an in and an out, and you can orchestrate that across whatever you choose. This could be an application or it could be an orchestration engine. But you can orchestrate things that are happening. You can develop workflows and have services come back with responses to your requests. You can do that all through a program. So this is technology enablement, part of where you would get to with the previous slide. So getting started, now let's talk about what you would do from an implementer standpoint. Now it starts to get hairy. Um, lots of broadcast organizations are very risk averse. They have a transcode farm and it's working very nicely for them. They have a way of transferring files and it's working very nicely for them. But there's a lot of steps involved and there's probably lots of resources including people involved with making that happen. So how can you become efficient? So to become efficient, you want to automate that stuff. And in order to automate it, you need to develop something that is kind of standard and is service-based, which is SOA. So you'll need to step back and decide how you're going to replace your point-to-point -point integrations. That would be one of the first things that you'd want to do because I've got point-to-point -point integrations. I am an operating shop. What do I want to do first? So you might step back and decide, what do you want to hit first? What is going to be opportunistic for me to actually replace first? Maybe it's a transcode farm. Maybe it's just a transfer service. And step back and look at how you could actually replace that single service and start implementing FIMS, bring FIMS in. It doesn't have to be a total big, big bang way of doing things. And probably not going to happen unless you're a very large organization that can afford that R&D and can afford proof of concepts and can afford a big bang approach. So start from how you could actually replace single services. Then you all want to think about what you're going to do with business process management. How am I going to orchestrate all of these services working harmoniously? How am I going to make my workflows actually work for me? So I need to step back and think about what I need to consider uh, to make that happen. Then I have lots of metadata decisions. I probably have some metadata in my shop. It's already been there. I've got some, some ways of keeping metadata. It might be on a spreadsheet, might be in a relational database. It's got an application somewhere. How do I then implement FIMS that has a metadata model behind it and probably need to add some more descriptive metadata 
so that I can make this a richer environment and a better user experience. So I need to think about what I'm going to do with my metadata before I start. That's very, very important. Then I need to decide what services I actually want to implement. FIMS gives you some services out of the box. Version 1.1 has the right services. But in order to actually utilize those services in my environment, I might need some core services. I might need, for example, an ID service that can globally identify uniquely within my shop what I'm doing within FIM. So I'll need to take a step back and decide what kind of core services I might want, I might want to include in a FIMS implementation. Uh, I also then have some functional services. FIMS, as I said, is supplying some functional services. So they would probably good, be good enough to start. I might need to add some more functional services. Uh, but FIMS gives you a way to actually do that. And the FIMS team is actually also building more services as we speak. From an implementation perspective, we talked about uh, business process management. And that's really a services pattern. That's a design pattern that you would actually uh, implement. So what kind of process modeler am I going to use? What's going to be the business process notation? Is it going to be BPM in two? What am I going to use? These are important things that you want to decide on when you're starting to implement maybe a, a orchestration layer. What's the process engine going to look like? How fast is it? What's it actually going to export? Is it going to export uh, business prospect, uh, pro, uh, process export language? Is it some other language? Lots of organizations have their own. Uh, but this is a standard. Do you want standards? So those are some of the questions that you'd want to ask when you start looking at, what am I going to use for this business process management layer and the orchestration? Or do I want to implement something like choreography, where things are all set across and just happen at certain times? So there's lots of discussion, lots of decisions that you would need to make as a implementer of a SOA. And that's not just FIMS, it's, it's based on an SOA as well. What's the complexity? Lots of these orchestration uh, providers have very complex mechanisms to build these workflows. How complex do you want it? And if you're just starting, you probably don't want it real complex. You want to be able to get something running quickly. You want something lean. You want to be able to show the, the customers that I have something and give them value early. So you want to decide on how complex you want this orchestration layer act to actually be. And then, above all, what's the performance going to be like and how can I monitor my performance? And do I need to have some kind of a resource service? So those are some things that you would want to keep in mind when you're actually developing the orchestration layer. And that's for SOA, not just specific to FIMS, but certainly when you're bringing in a FIMS, it's an SOA. So I talked about metadata. You probably, again, already have some metadata. You have some descriptive metadata in your shop. How is that going to mesh up with what it is I'm doing with FIMS? So I need to be able to harmonize that. I need to sit down with the DBAs and with the folks that know about the metadata in my shop and understand how FIMS is going to impact that and start mapping that out. Um, so I have some descriptive metadata. I also have uh, some extensions that I might need for the applications that I'm actually going to put in play or the services that I'm going to put in play. So I might need to decide what additional metadata and how do I extend that into the uh, data model to make that work. Those some, are some other considerations that you'd need to make. Um, the media container is a BM object. It's already there for you. And we thought about that when we were des designing the FIMS metadata model. So you have a media container. And you also have media descriptions, which is then a reference to the media that you have. So that comes with FIMS. Uh, and you also have the format. So you have the codex, the wrappers, you have a place to store all of that. So that's all taken care of. But I probably did that before. I had ways to do that in my shop. Now, how do I marry that when I bring in FIMS? So those are some, some considerations that you'd need to make from a technical implementator or implementation perspective. Separation of concern. Now that I'm going to be talking about these services, one of the things that I'm going to be uh, key on understanding is when I look at a implementation of a service, how was that service actually implemented 
and how did the vendor actually implement it. I want to know about that because I want to know what they did right here on their service abstraction. I want to know how they did that. So I might actually uh, do a proof of concept or a pilot with that vendor and see how it actually works and put it in my environment and play with it to see how it's actually going to fire up against the rest of my services. Uh, for example, if I'm creating media and I'm creating uh, the data about that media, the content, and I'm maybe implementing the transfer service along with the repository service, I want to see how those things play because performance is key. So that would be something that I would look at. Is it SOAP or REST? What's my shop? Which way do I want to go? Can I do both? And you can do both. So those are some considerations that you would actually want to uh, take, take into consideration. So this is the vendor uh, specific part. This is the thing that the vendors are actually going to implement when they implement this. And it's a separation of concern because I might have an orchestration engine that I've decided on. Now I have the services and I actually want to see how they work. But one of the cool things is, as you notice, is that I have a common FIMS interface across a common IT network, and that is the framework that FIMS provides. So that comes with it, but you want to take into these other considerations when you actually do the implementation.